G'day guys and welcome back to Supercoach with DR. So today I thought I'd do a video on one of my favourite players in the comp, but someone who I think could be a real breakout candidate this year in Huey McCluggage. So I must start off by saying that um, I've got some huge man love for Hugh. Uh, he's my little fella's favourite player. He's got the number six on his jumper. The rabbit's name's Hugh. The hermit's crab's name's Hugh. There's multiple soft toys in the house that are named after Hugh as well. So I will try my best not to be biased and not uh, look at it through my maroon, blue and yellow glasses. Um, and just look at some of the pure stats and give some minus opinions about Huey. So to be honest, he reminds me a lot of, of Scotty Pendlebury in the fact that everyone and everything seems to slow down around him. He, he finds space. He's got some great disposal. And for me, he's one of those blokes so I'd be happy to give a multi-year, multi-million dollar deal to keep him. And I think he's absolutely untradeable. Um, and again, I will get a bit of my bias in, but I think he could be a future Brownlow medal winner, Huey. He's, he's that elite. So um, enough about that. Um, we'll get into a little bit of his history um, with his draft year, and then we'll get into some more super coach relevant stuff. So uh, first of all, he's selected by the Brisbane Lions with pick three in the 2016 National Draft. Uh, I know that many of the recruiters rated him as the best talent in the draft, and the Lions recruiters were wrapped that he actually slipped down to three. We originally started with pick two in this draft, but GWS were really, really keen to move up from pick three. We got, I think it was pick 16, back in exchange, and we end up getting... Berry with that, Jared Berry, probably my favourite player on the Brisbane list. Uh, for those that, that know the, the history of the two boys, their best mates went to boarding school together, are inseparable, still are, even though they're, they're now uh, in Brisbane, uh, lived together for a long time as well. So it was a, a super, super draft for Brisbane. I think that's really helped to, to shape the success that we're starting to see now on the field, along with blokes like Alex Woodden, who we picked up later on the draft as well. So, yeah, really successful draft, the 2016 draft. And he was also the winner of the, the Morrish Medal as well. You can see the, uh, I think it's a photo that we've got up there. So, um, yeah, a really, really elite junior. And he's only still 21. So he'll be 22 by the time the, the season starts. But um, certainly his, his best years are, are ahead of him. So let's just get in some 2019 stats. He played 23 games, including the three finals. He had an average of 23 disposals, 14 kicks, 9 handballs, 4 marks, and getting close to 4 tackles. So I'm hoping that, you know, given the fact that he's he's building himself up, his body's getting more conditioned, he's becoming stronger, that hopefully he can push that 3.7 to somewhere like a 4.5, which will help to boost some of his score as well. But, um, you know, as you hear about many, many players in the off-season, he's meant to be getting fitter, meant to be getting stronger. And um, I'm not sure what other clubs do, you know, media-wise, but I think the, all the stuff uh, media-wise that the, the Lions do is absolutely terrific. And every player that's interviewed, you know, you tend to get the same questions. Who's burning it up? You know, all those cliche questions that you get over the off-season. But Hugh McCluggage is the answer, you know, most of the time. Um, he's highly, highly rated internally at Brisbane. And he's one of those blokes that just continually, continually does everything he can to improve his game. Really professional, and uh, I, I genuinely believe, as I said, that um, he'll be one of the elite mids of the competition um, in the years to come, if not pushing, you know, next year or the year after. There was 190 semis, so almost 200 contested possessions, which is ranked fifth at the Lions, and 332 of the uncontested. So looking at that, I think he's got a pretty good mix of the inside and the outside. He obviously likes to kick the ball more. It is more of an, you know, an outside game that he has, but you can see there that he's certainly not afraid to get his hands dirty and, and get inside as well. And the thing that I love the most about Hugh McCluggage is that he averaged a goal a game. He's been a goal kicker, you know, since day one, you know, of his AFL career, going back to the junior days, also, you know, a really good goal kicker as well. So that obviously helps to boost up his score every week. So if you continue to average, you know, around the one goal a game, then, you know, I, I think that his scores only to continue to improve. So he's 29 in super coach stats. stats. He had a season average of 94, season high of 126, 123 and 115 and season low scores of 68, 72, and 73. So he was a pretty consistent scorer, but, um, you know, as we can see, 
doesn't have a really high ceiling, which is something that, that is a, of a little bit of a concern. But obviously that will build as, you know, as his career goes on and, and the years go by. He started at 416k and ended up on 474k. So it was a modest price rise of, what's that, uh, 58 uh, thousand there. Um, so I didn't make a, a huge amount of money, but we'll see in a minute that his uh, score, well, his average from the last year actually jumped by over 20. So his super coach history in 2017, he played 18 games with an average of 54. So pretty modest outcome, um, given the fact that he was a, you know, a top three draft pick. I'm sure, that, and I don't know what his original price was, but I'm sure it would have been inflated due to that fact. So 54 you know, isn't terrific from, um, you know, a number three pick in their first year, particularly if you paid that premium price on him at the start. But um, solid nonetheless. You know, it's his first year um, and, you you know, don't necessarily expect huge numbers. We go into 2018 where he played 22 games and bumped that average up to 77. So certainly didn't have any second-year blues, Huey. Didn't smash it out of the park with a 77, but that's also a 23-point increase there from 2017 now we're going on to 2019 he's boosted that average now up to 94 um with the 21 games and that's you know another boost there uh in the the 20s as well so what do we got uh, 80 sorry that's a 17 point boost but i think if he can continue and let's just say you know if he builds on that average by 10 to 15 then, you know, he's getting to that 105, 110 average, which um, is a nice average to have. But the question is, is it good enough to be in our midfields? That's a question we've all got to ask ourselves. His role. So he's got a, a pretty super coach friendly role, in my opinion. He's a winger. So in my opinion, uh, him and Mitch Robbo are the best combination, the wing combination in the AFL. You could call them the odd couple, uh, different personalities. I can't see really anything similar about the two boys um, on or, or off the field, but um, they complement each other really, really well. I think Robbo probably had a career best season on the wing, which is a role that um, he wasn't expecting to play. I don't think at the start of the year, he, I know that he was in the B team originally doing the practice matches and, and the simulations there pre-season, but uh, Fags gave him an opportunity to make the spot his own, along with Huey in the other wing, and um, he took it with both hands. And I think that, uh, and again, this might be the bias coming through, but Huey was one of the unluckiest omissions from the All-Australian side. And I think it depends on how you're building the side. Are you simply putting the 22 best players in there or, you know, with those midfield positions, just putting, you know, anyone in there. But I think if you're really looking to structure your All-Australian side around, you know, the best players in their positions, then for me, Huey was the number one winger in the comp. Um, and again, really, really, I think, unlucky to miss out on the All-Australian side. I think, given the fact as well that he's, you know, he's building his tank, he's getting stronger, that simply means he'll be able to get to more contests, you know, and even have more of a, a an impact than what he's had in the past and, and even this season. So I think that, you know, given the fact he's he'll be 22 by the start of the season, um, Got, you know, some really good players around him, some great people to learn off, particularly, you know, players like Lockie Neal there in the middle and Zorks, who I think has been a terrific leader for the club. You know, forget about, you know, some, some of the incidents he's had with Tuke Miller. I think he's, he's passed that and done a terrific job there. But, um, yeah, I think that Huey McCluggage is, is one of those players that you definitely have to look at. Is it your and no from me? Well, at the moment, I, I'm, I'm seriously looking at him but he's not currently in my side. A few reasons that's, that's holding me back at the moment. I mentioned before his ceiling. So last year, he only had the eight scores over 100 plus, um, and that worries me with the top score, what was it, around the, the, the 120 odd. So he certainly hasn't pumped out those huge scores like many of the other elite mids have. Is it coming? I hope. But will it come this year? You know, I'm not too sure. And that's another thing we've got to ask ourselves. Is he going to be in the top eight to 12 mids in the comp. If you think a yes, then by all means, at his price point just over 510, bring him in, bring him in. But personally, I can't see it. I can't see it this year anyway. Look, I'd put my house on it that he's gonna be a 100 plus averaging player. But for me, I'm looking for, a, you know, an absolute minimum of probably, you know, that, that 110 
to 115 average if I'm even going to consider anyone for that midfield spot. If he was forward eligible, then I think he'd be one of the most popular forward picks this year. But given the fact that he hasn't got that status, and I was really hoping that he would, given the fact that he's you know kicked a goal a game, um, unfortunately he hasn't. So yeah, at, at that price point in the midfield, it's currently a no from me. As I said, seriously considering him. If he was under 500, you know, closer to you know your, your 480 mark, then I'd probably have him in the side from now. Even though my you know rule this year is going to be you know only select mids that I think will be in that top bracket that can you know really average those 115, 120 plus averages. So it would be going against my rule this year to to select you. But you know, depending on team structure, you know, I know my back line at the moment is looking pretty bare. I may need to invest some money there and um, possibly downgrade, you know, a Fife to a Hugh if I need to. So, um, look, I hope that's given you a little bit of uh, info about Huey. I certainly think that he could be a real breakout contender this year. Will he be in the top bracket? I'm not too sure. Does he have the potential? I certainly think he does. Um, again, Brisbane are, are a team on the rise. Um, look, we, we, we know what happened with Melbourne last year. So, you know, we're, um, we're not definitely, you know, you know, going to be another top four side or, you know, let alone in the top eight. I, I certainly think we will be as a Brisbane Lions supporter. Um, that may be more hopeful than not, but um, I think most people would agree that we're certainly a top eight side and hopefully looking to, to get to the top four. So again, I'm um, sorry for the, the quality of the video. I know that the, uh, the graphics aren't, aren't great. There might be a little bit pixelated and I haven't got a, a great uh, microphone at all. Um, I'm not, <laughs> I'm very new when it comes to this sort of stuff. So if you, if you like the content, give it a like, let me know, chuck a few comments down below. And again, if you don't like it, let me know and I'll get the uh, message loud and clear and, and leave it to some of the other experts. But, uh, again, guys, hope your planning's all going well. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you soon with a new one. Take care guys. Cheers. Bye.